Good morning, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. It is um, May 20th, Friday, May 20th, 7.16 a.m. Um, we are gonna be loading this trolley car first thing in the morning. Um, don't mind that, that's nothing special. Not, it's not a new truck or anything, so don't mind that. Uh, now I'm just at the Nerf car shooting it on. It's not, it's not a new truck or anything. A new truck or anything. It is. It is definitely a brand new, well, new to us, 389. It only has like 90,000 miles on it. It was a steal. We picked it up. Just got back from Texas last night. We'll show you that here in a second. Uh, but with that being said, we have this trolley car. This uh, Presidio Avenue. That's where it uh, came from. We're, I don't know. I don't know. This guy that we're transporting from, I guess, bought two of these. So this is one of two that we're transporting to, where are these going? Huh? Redlands. So they do not run. This one particular one has air brakes. The other one was juice brakes. So we're gonna um, load it up, send it on its way. Now, what we're gonna try to do, I will admit, it is not a pretty load. It will not be pretty, but it will be legal if it works. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this trolley car on, and then if you guys watched yesterday's vlog. Um, there is a mini excavator in the back of our property that we need to take to Ukaipa. So we're anticipating that if we get this winched up as far up as we can, we'll have just enough room on the tail to put that, uh, that mini excavator on. That way we kind of knock out two birds with one stone, save on fuel, keep the truck loaded kind of thing. So we're going to try our very best to make that happen. So we will see. So anyway, let's get this thing uh, loaded up. We got Tommy in truck 19. He's gonna be loading this up and we're gonna help him out. So let's check it out. This, uh, I don't know what year it is. Hey buddy. Ah. Uh. There's an air fitting right here on the tank. Oh yeah? Is that what you used? We went all the way, oh. Oh. We went all the way back there. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. At least I see that right there. Yeah. Looks like their towing provider was Atlas Towing. If they get, if they broke down. First aid. Some sort of microphone. Yeah, yeah I don't know what the concept of this. Probably city tours or maybe they were city uh, transportation. Hard to say. So we're gonna try our very best to load this all the way forward and then put that Mini X on the tail. fitting that they just removed how they aired this bus up but uh we found an air fitting on the very front so that's what we're going to use it's a lot easier you, uh, would you go over the steering arm and the axle with the chain um i would go around it hug it right i would go under the bottom and come back not going to push up under one no so good you go under over you come right. from the He's asking where to go with his chain. On the brake? Yeah, you go under, over, yeah, keep, the keep, so you keep your winch as low as possible. Yeah. Oh yeah, she bad. Pretty excited about that one. Is that good right there? Yes. Thank Someone Did we determine that we're not doing the winch cable straight? Yeah, I kind of saw it. It's not long enough to glide all the way around the uh, steering arm. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. can always throw four chains on the trailer if we really need to. But... I, I put the, I don't need to put the chain on the board. It's going to happen. I'll throw them down. Hey, the board. Call it. You want me to go around or just hook it? I go around. Keep going over here. Okay. Ah. Tommy, the oh, why the bag not going there? I know, I know it's that. Uh, there, buddy. wonder if we could get the overhead the level, but that's easy. Yeah, okay. Alright, right. right, so we're gonna have to hold off out here as best we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Tommy can't back up straight. What the heck? Sorry. <laughs> Any of the wheels chucked? 
No. Don't worry about David. You know when you're ready, Hoss. Hossie. Hossie. <laughs> that was the hammer. stick to check out let's see so this height stick is from BA products as you guys can see it comes in a nice case which I really enjoy because the past uh, height sticks that I've gotten did not come with a height stick and this one is a lot more high quality than the ones that I've used in the past that is for sure um, additionally to that they do make a 20 foot model of this which I'm pretty interested in because our loads that we measure are typically higher than 15 feet. This thing might be over height. <laughs> that little dome threw us off, so it might be high. It looks pretty low. It just throws you off because the day cab. But beat. let's just get a height on it and just make sure. <laughs> I'm getting tired of you spitting, spitting venom at my truck, bro. Spitting venom. <laughs> but yeah, this ice stick's pretty nice. Thanks to BA Products for sending us that. I'm definitely interested in the 20 foot model because when we measure over height, we're uh, 15, 16 feet tall at least. This one only goes to 15 feet. So what we like to do with the height stick to just check our height, to make sure we're under height is set it to 14 and then just kind of set it next to and swipe across, make sure nothing hits. Oh yeah. You're plenty clear. I mean, not plenty, but you, probably 13.9, 13.8. Morning, Caesar. Yeah. 13.9. Cool. Alrighty, so this truck is a 2020 Peterbilt 389 with uh, like roughly 90,000, I think it's 88,000 miles. Um, this truck came out of Texas. It was previously owned by Isaac's Wrecker Service and they pulled a Landall trailer with this. Don't really know the story. I think my dad knows about why they got rid of it, uh, but they got rid of it. So uh, we picked it up, swooped it up. Goodbye. Um, it is already plumbed for hydraulic fitting. So first order of business this morning, we're going to take it down to the hydraulic shop and get the hydraulic fittings so we can run a Landall trailer, so we can use this truck um, if we absolutely need to until uh, we get a chain box, probably in this region right here. Uh, put a chain box here, then uh, we obviously gotta get the truck lettered. But yeah, we're super excited about this truck. It's got a little coffin box sleeper, super clean inside. Oh, jeez, fell. Okay, yeah, super clean inside. Smells brand new still. So yeah, we're pretty pumped. It's got nice lighting all the way around, LED running lights all the way around, breather lights, LED uh, cab lights, lollipop. So nice fenders. Yeah, we're pretty pumped. So definitely gonna be seeing more of this truck for sure. This thing is gonna be a frontline runner. Um, with the sleeper we're kind of anticipating to be able to take some longer hauls maybe not necessarily sleeping in the sleeper but you know just having that comfort would be nice so um that's what this truck's gonna be doing so pretty excited let us know in the comments what you think about it i know what i think about it black is definitely different for us i don't think we've had a black truck in the fleet as you guys can see the wind's 
dirty and it's already dusty. That is the downside of black, so we'll just have to stay on top of it for sure. So, alrighty, let's go ahead and uh, take this thing to the hydraulic shop and measure up that uh, space for the chain box. All right, just had a little side mission. Had to bring that trailer back. 90 day inspection went really good. No problems with the trailer. I mean, it's an older trailer, but new tires, new hubs, new oil seals. Looking good. All right, so let's go ahead and drop this trailer. I'm gonna grind ourselves into gear. I think the clutch brake on this is going bad. Uh, release, drop our airbags. Fire this baby up, hook it up to the three axle, and take it over to the hydraulic shop. This truck is significantly quieter than the uh, rotator, but they have the same motor. Woo, that black on black looks good. One thing right off the bat is this thing sits so much higher than the other trucks. We always thought that the Kenworth sat pretty high, but this one sits really high. Same tire size too, 24 fives. So it, I don't know, this must be the, the fifth wheel setting or the, the fifth wheel itself. I don't know, but it looks really good. I noticed it has disc brakes. I don't know, it might just be that the rear ends are the, the heavy duty rear ends. So maybe that has something to do with it. But yeah, that black on black looks good. This truck actually has a tighter turning radius than I thought. I think I'm just used to driving the Kenworth. The Kenworth, you get about one turn out of the steering wheel and then you're maxed out. This one, uh, it, I made a U-turn in the yard. It was pretty tight. I was impressed. So we're going to take this hydraulic shot. We got uh, our fittings here that we're going to have to plumb and match up. And then uh, the, oh, I didn't even tell you guys. Um, we sold the Cascadia. Yeah, so the old Cascadia that we had, we sold that. And this is the replacement, so I don't, I didn't tell you guys that. Um, so the company that bought the Cascadia from us, they're a local company uh, and they run end dumps. So they're gonna be returning those fittings to us, which is much appreciated because those fittings are like 500 bucks or 250 a piece. So we're gonna get everything done except the male and female fittings at the ends of those. And then once we get that back from the company, we'll uh, reinstall them and then we'll be good to go. Pretty, pretty happy. So. Uh, let's go ahead and head to the hydraulic shop. Uh, I'm bringing Mark with me because you know he's the mechanic. He, he has a good idea of what we need, so I'm gonna take him with it, with me. That way we will have an idea of exactly what we need. Yeah, it's gotta be beveled. Yeah. So, but he, he can stop. Yeah, I better stop that. All right, so we already had the hydraulic guy come out and kind of measure the distance, figure out what we need. He just needed us to pull that cap off so we can figure out what a uh, thread that is. Bam, she bad, man. That's a nice look. good secure with a little detour morning everybody it is the next day um yesterday kind of got away from me i was uh obviously you guys are watching up if you guys are watching up until this point um i think the last thing we did yesterday was something with the hydraulic fittings and then i ended up taking the new truck to the lettering shop to get uh measured out and lettered and then um yeah, then the day just got crazy. I had to go hook up a tractor only, going to Walnut, California, which is eh, like 110 miles from our shop. So I got back around eight o'clock last night, and then, uh, yeah, then obviously just ate dinner and went to bed. So here we are the next morning. Um, we're gonna try to see what got done with this truck. I kind of tasked Mark with putting on the hydraulic lines, which she did. Thank you very much, Mark. So hydraulic lines are on. And then I also said, if possible, it's kind of a 
shot in the dark, but I said if possible, let's get the camera system in. Yeah, there's the camera system. Nice. So yeah, Mark got all that done. <gasps> Dirt. And a screwdriver. That's Mark's screwdriver. Snap on. Mm, T20. We'll have to give that back to him. Um, but yeah, so that is that all got done. Those were the major things, and then obviously getting it lettered. Um, I think today what I would like to do is kind of get the sleeper, start to get things in here that we're going to need. Um, flags, bungees, oversized signs. I ordered two oversized signs that are magnetic that will magnet mount to the um, bumper and will probably live right here when not needed. So you know you can just slap them right here. Um, that way they're accessible. I already talked to the guys. I would love... or. The, by the guys, I mean Darwin, my dad. Gloves need to stay in here. I don't want gloves in the cab. I wonder what that's for. Seems like a thick wire for... Anyway, um, I put a tub of towels in here. And then I was thinking it'd be nice to get a uh, one of those magnet toolbox mounts. Or magnetic... Uh, glove mounts. They, they're like, they're designed to mount on the side of toolboxes. Um... For your um, disposable gloves so I was just gonna maybe put a one of those right here um, and then we'll just have to get a nice kit made up for all of our flag signs and bungees um, another order of business this morning is we need to uh, check and make sure that the hydraulics function one and two we need to check the turning clearance and make sure that we have proper turning clearance um, I also wanted to make sure here that this uh, was properly set up. Let's see. Looks like this is gonna be your pressure line. And so following the line, the pressure, pressure. So Mark has it set up on the uh, female end as the pressure. Let's confirm over here that that is the same. So, looks like, looks like this is the pressure. So we'll follow that. I'm assuming Mark did this, same scenario. Yeah, okay, so just, we're basically, let's, uh, I guess walk you through my, my thought process here. So this truck, you know, obviously functions with this trailer, with the Landall trailer. So I'm assuming that the line setup here is Correct, so basically what I did was, this is your return on a Landall, and this is opposed to like a, um, this is opposed to a end dump. An end dump, it only has one hydraulic cylinder and it's either going up or it's going down, right? And so um, that only has one line, one single line, which Truck 21, I can show you guys, is set up for that one line end dump PTO. So basically you have pressure out and then you have pressure coming back in all in one go now on a landall trailer you could have pressure going in and out at the same exact time you could have you could be um, lifting the bed and you could be running the axles forward so you're lifting the bed putting hydraulic pressure into the cylinders and then uh, retracting or running the axles forward pushing hydraulic fluid out so you need to have a pressure and a return so in this instance, this is the return line. As you guys can see, the return line goes back around and somehow gets into the tank. Um, I think it comes in on the bottom. Let's see, Let's see if I can show you guys. Um, oh, I'm kind of dumb. <laughs> it's right here in front of me. This, I thought it was a split tank. Here's the hydraulic tank right here. So this is the return line right here. So. That relieves the pressure, and then this is the pressurized line, which comes out of the PTO. So the PTO is, you know, taking fluid out, pressurizing it, and sending it into the system, which is this line. So I'm following that line all the way around, and we come to this line, which is the pressure side, and that's the female fitting. So same on this side. This is our pressure pressure line. It comes up to here. We're gonna follow it all the way around, and we have the female. I just want to make sure we don't blow up the system because you know you're talking a lot of pressure here so if you don't have it right something bad's gonna happen which we've done that on this truck unfortunately um it wasn't even a matter of doing it wrong it was just a matter of not having the hoses hooked up 
Um, I always preach to the guys, and especially after this incident, in incident, I always preach to the guys, if you're gonna leave your hydraulic lines off, let's say you bobtail somewhere, you need to move just a trailer, hook your hydraulic lines together, so that way if you accidentally turn on your PTO without the lines hooked together, you don't blow the whole system up. Because we figured out once, um, basically we were running the PTO and the truck was shut off, okay? So the truck was shut off, I'll show you guys. This is a, a good learning experience. The truck over here was shut off. Ooh. There we go. So the truck was shut off. So let, okay, let me re restart. So the truck was running, right? Um, turn the AC off. Okay. So the truck was running. PTO was on, and uh, they were doing some work on it, and then they just shut off the truck, right? But the PTO was still on. So when the next guy came over to start it, and he probably you know just started it from down there did his pre-trip in the morning, went to start it, went to check the rest of the truck, started it, PTO was already on, as soon as the air pressure came up enough to engage the PTO, PTO engaged and it blew the whole hydraulic system because it was under pressure and the lines were not connected to each other. So when you have all this pressure and nowhere to go, it has to do something, so it blew up and we had to replace a good amount of the system. So learning experience for sure um, so now I preach please connect the lines uh, together so that way the hydraulic fluid has somewhere to go if we get into a situation like that anyway let's go ahead and hook up this trailer and uh, we'll check our turning clearance to have a truck that doesn't leak air overnight. It held air pressure all night. It's awesome. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the hydraulic lines disconnected first. I'm gonna jackknife the truck basically to 90 almost, and then I'll try to hook up the hydraulic lines. The reason I'm gonna do that is because although I can see out that back window, I don't wanna do anything that I don't like without having a spotter. So I'm gonna put it in the worst situation I can and then try to hook up the lines and see if it has enough play. What we ended up doing here was we measured the distance from here to there, which is like roughly six feet, and then added two feet. Um, so hopefully that's enough. We'll see. Anyway, um, let me go ahead and I'm just gonna back it up and jackknife it. All right, so we got the trailer uh, maybe at a little more than a 45. So we're getting there. Um, sounds like we got a glad hand leaking, so probably have to find the rubber for that to replace. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit further. I just wanted to make sure we had proper clearance here, which we do. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go back a little bit further. All right, so that's pretty close to a 90, maybe an 80. I don't think you'd want to get this trailer much further than that, especially being a three axle. Get this thing in a bind pretty quick. So let's go ahead. Um, probably be best if we go the other side. Maybe I'll just put you right here. I'll have to kind of show you after the fact, but. These are the hydraulic fittings. So, looks like they're gonna reach right here. Hook. Hook. I don't know. So the, obviously that we gotta secure these somehow um, so that they're not dragging. But, I don't know, they are a little short, I think, because can't really go up on the pole with them at a jackknife. So really, maybe all we can do is secure them to the existing loom. I don't know, let me, uh, well, we know we have the clearance to do this. Now we just gotta probably pull forward, straighten out and see what it looks like, see how we can secure it. So 
obviously that's not gonna work how it is now. We're gonna have to secure the line somehow. I think what I'm going to do to start is I'm going to get some zip ties and I'm going to tie them, tie the line in place. This will be in place of like actual band clamps, uh, but just to get an idea of how it's going to how it's going to ride, I think that's what I need to do. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to turn the PTO on and just make sure that we don't have any leaks. So let's go ahead and do that and hope that system doesn't blow up. I haven't turned the PTO on on this yet, so we'll go in gear, PTO, out of gear. Uh, I didn't really hear a difference in pitch. Oh, uh, now I do. So. Sounds like the trailer's got pressure. Yeah, it does. Okay. So, I'm gonna leave the PTO on while I go get some zip ties, that way we can see if any any leaks occur. I'm gonna grab this uh, this guy right here. Take that back to the shop. All right. Well, we definitely have a slight leak going on right there. So initially, we're just gonna try to tighten it, uh, but we might need to pull that. That's on the uh, that's on the pressure side. Maybe put some more Teflon on. Turn the truck off for now. Let me grab a, a wrench for that. All right, so like I said, we're gonna try to tighten this up initially. See if that's our issue. Got a big crescent here. Let's just try to get a turn out of it. See what happens. It's pretty tight. I'm starting to turn the the bottom, so we'll leave it like that. Um, and we'll try it again here in a little bit. We'll probably clean it off and make sure. Um, all right, let's go back to our zip tie project. All right, guys, so this is what I came up with. Obviously, like I said, these are temporary. I'm gonna do like actual uh, band clamps or whatever you wanna call them, uh, some sort of clamping system. But I think the best way to do this is to let the pole, which do what it's designed to do, which is flex, um, so I basically am going to secure the hydraulic lines to the pole itself. So when you're at a full jackknife, you know, you still have play here. Now that's not to say that the lines aren't tight. That's for sure. You definitely got to watch it, but you could take it to a full 90 and let's say this pole were to fail and this thing breaks, you're not, you're putting the stress on the pole, not the lines. So there's that. And then this is a mock-up as well of like a spring system. I'm just going to put like a clamp halfway down the line so and uh, put it to a spring here so that way it keeps it off the ground or off the catwalk when you're going down the road. And that seems to work out. Um, let's take a look at the other side. So that seems to work out. You have, you know, play here and you have play here. So I think it'll work out. You just, you obviously got to be careful um, with any truck. You got, you have to be mindful of your lines when you jackknife, but I think this will work. And it's not like you're at a full jackknife any, a lot. It's just in certain situations. And in certain situations too, you just disconnect your lines if you really, really need to, if you're worried about it. So, um, okay. I think that's what we're gonna stick with for now. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and test that, uh, the hydraulic fitting that we tightened up. Uh, let's go and bump up the idle too, get the pump going. Let's go and run the hydraulics a little bit. I'm curious how quick the PTO on this is. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's pretty quick. The, uh, it's not here, the blue Peterbilt. Let me give you a, a synopsis on what's going on right now. I don't even know if that's the right word for that, synopsis. Probably not. Um, Tommy, it's Saturday. Tommy is en route to Calipatria with three warehouse forklifts, and then he's bringing three back. So he's doing a swap out, and then uh, Roberto's en route to Irvine to pick up a trash truck coming back to uh, the local disposal company. So that's what's going on this morning, and then uh, you know I was out late last night, so I'm here this morning, um, and probably gonna go to Home Depot now. 
get the parts for this and just a few little miscellaneous things. Let's see, let's see. I can't tell if that's uh, residual or not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab some uh, carb cleaner, spray that off. Let me take the tools that I used to back. So considering there's not an accumulated puddle, uh, I think we're okay, but we'll go ahead and give it a nice cleaning just to make sure. back and level the deck out so um, we can run some hydraulic fluid through the system and then uh, we'll check and see if that leak is persisting or not. Looks good. I don't see any leaks so it should complete. All right so a little series of events, change of events that has occurred. So in the last video you guys saw that we uh, did a 90 day inspection on trailer and then took it back to the customer. Well, now we're picking up that trailer again because it's going to Pasadena um, as well as this trailer. So here's the Kenworth, which I'm gonna disconnect and uh, this curtain side trailer, which is loaded with a bunch of staging. This trailer is gonna be going to Pasadena on Monday as well as the other trailer that we're picking up. And then I think uh, we're gonna move a bunch of trailers in Pasadena and then bring back four so it's a whole mess of staging that we're moving around um, from Pasadena to uh, let's see if I can give you guys a look from Pasadena back to India let's see uh, you probably guys probably aren't gonna be able to see what's in there but yeah just got brand new tires on this trailer so yeah all right, we're on the move again. We got the trailer headed back past, uh, I'm sorry, back to the yard, Pasadena on Monday. Just putting some fuel in it for uh, Monday. I don't know who's taking it. I think Jorge is driving this up there, so it's making sure it's all fueled up. So when they get here on Monday, it's not like, oh my goodness, you don't have fuel. And then that's a 30 minute delay. So just making sure everything's ready. All right, on this new app, we can just do fuel entry and uh, just put in the gallons which is 85.7 and odometer 257037 so, boom all right go ahead and flip this away shut the truck down probably just gonna leave it right here i think yeah so I was able to find this spring on one of the other trucks, actually the Kenworth, uh, that was not being used. So that's a good find. I'll go ahead and use this here and then we'll find a way to terminate it to those hoses. I'm gonna go to Home Depot right now, find some sort of clamp, and then find another system to clamp this to that. So yeah, that is what we got going on there. And then I also went ahead and took the three axle remote and just mounted it right here. So. Let's go ahead and head to Home Depot, see what we can find. All right, good secured. Got a few bins, miscellaneous parts. I think we'll be good. That's not something easy every day. Here, probably want to hold the brake on that. The handbrakes are there, but it, it, I don't think it's gonna hold it. it My, you got room. Yeah, I'll go more up. I'll probably just get it up first. Yeah. So that is the uh, the festival jalopy. That is what we use out at the festivals to do, well, one of like six or seven trucks. Uh, we use that to do jump starts, lockouts, service calls, because the camping area is so tight that one, there's no way to get a flatbed in there, so that's definitely not the case. Uh, but battery trucks we use all the battery trucks out there and then this guy is a little front runner kind of a just runs around it's a lot easier to get around with it so now that uh festivals are over dad wants it back at the house <laughs> so let's have an air and take it back to the house my dad's got a decent property uh so he uses that in the trailer to get 
tasks done around the house. All right, so Mark was here working on his personal vehicle, so I just had him uh, kind of spot me. And this is what I came up with. So we did the jackknife test again. I ended up putting a, a clamp here, a spring here. That doesn't really do much in this instance, but when you're going down the road straight, it keeps this from hitting uh, there. And then I clamped the hoses to the spring bar. So that way you can see the spring bar is doing its job right now by giving it some tension so that the lines are off, but enough to where you know you could, just, you could theoretically still jackknife this past 90 if you really needed to, but I would really hope that none of the guys jackknife any further than 90. Um, so yeah, I think this is good. Our hydraulic leak is good. We are all set. So uh, we did just notice that we have a slight air leak uh, on this glad hand, so we're gonna replace both rubbers there. And uh, yeah, the day's pretty much coming to an end. I think I'm gonna take this truck tomorrow morning and probably on the same video to go get a 938 loader going to Morongo Valley. So uh, stay tuned for that and uh, we'll test this setup up, setup out. So stay tuned. I'm already in love with this truck. It's gonna be a good truck. Um, so as you guys can see, this is how it looks in the uh, going down the road straight state. You can see riding right above. This one I'm not too worried about because this has that sheath around it and that's you know how we got it. So we could adjust it if we want to, but I'm good with it. Um, yeah, so the plan tomorrow will be, plan tomorrow will be to take this truck, hopefully first thing in the morning, probably early, like 6 a.m. Um, to the local Caterpillar. We're gonna load up a 938 loader and run it here locally down the road to uh, Morongo Valley where we can kind of just get an idea of how this is gonna work out. I'm probably just gonna grab four chains off one of these trucks, throw it on the deck and uh, send it and we'll check it out. So I'm pretty excited about that. We'll get to run it down the road. Um, yeah, so um, with that being said, that will be the end of today, but not the end of the video so just be stay tuned for what's to come um today wasn't really much action that's why i'm gonna i've decided to include the 938 loader move uh tomorrow in today's video because you know really we were just doing a yard day today not the most exciting but uh hopefully you guys get a little look into what goes on behind the scenes here at plaza towing so uh with that being said we will see you tomorrow morning it's uh 5 58 here back at the yard get the truck fired up just gotta probably dump some fuel in it and uh throw four chains on it and uh we'll go ahead and load our loader <laughs> Four chains of miners and a milk crate up there. And it's a beautiful morning. Off to a good start. All right guys, we made it, we're here. Uh, this is a new facility for uh, the cat dealer. Pretty awesome, they got concrete. This is a very well done facility. So with that being said, uh, you guys know the drill. We're gonna go ahead, we're already in gear, clutch in, PTO engaged, out of gear set our uh, tractor brake only, and then we'll just go ahead and bump up the idle a bit. Start by grabbing our remote and our gloves. I go ahead and set gloves up there. I believe that's our machine over there, brand new, or next gen, 938. Let's go ahead and run the uh, bed up. Then axles ahead, which like I said, this remote acts up sometimes with the axle ahead button. So sometimes you just gotta be really forceful with it to get it started, and then it's easy. Since this truck sits so high, you can go below, below uh, level with the top deck. Just interesting. All right. I'm gonna set you guys. I'm gonna set you guys up right there. I'm gonna grab all the chains off the top in that milk crate and uh, put them down to the side. All right. Let's go get our machine. 
So 938 loader, a next gen machine. It's actually a decent sized machine now. It used to be not this big. Um, I would say that this is a little bit closer to like a 950 now. It's uh, let's see, okay, that's good, maybe. The bucket might sit over the trailer edges just a tad. We'll see. All right, let's just confirm this is our machine based on the unit number 1373. Let's see, so here is my tow bucks. Oh, looks like Roberto just got dispatched to go do a tow up in Chiraca Summit. Anyway, this is my call right here. 1373 ending. Cool, I'm gonna dispatch it to myself. Train A, put it in truck 20, which is the old Freightliner in Cascadia. The new, the new truck, I haven't changed it on this end yet. Um, okay, there, just got the notification, so I'm just gonna mark myself on scene. Okay, so now protocol is, let's take some pictures show how the uh, machine appears before I touch it. Usually just try to get all four corners and then just show any damage that might that we might see like a broken window or a flat tire or something like that. This machine looks pretty good though. Okay, let's go ahead and head on up. Alrighty. All right, they left a key in for us. Go ahead and uh, turn the key to the on position, just kind of let it do it. Someone is jamming. Um, let it do its warm up, let it do its cycle. And once the screen kind of shows its display, there, like that, start her up. And we should have, yep, active hydraulics. Some of these have a switch, like the John Deere's have a, a switch that you have to hit to activate the hydraulics. This one, everything's on your joystick as opposed to being over here. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and raise the bucket and then I'll disengage the parking brake and go into forward. Should be able to move. kind of take it around the corner here that way we get a nice straight shot onto the deck so what I do on this particular machine uh, is I line up I use the big arm and I kind of line that up with the uh, center metal rails on the Landall trailer and that kind of gives me an idea of center I also use the center knuckle and um, hydraulic cylinder to kind of find center too. So I'm gonna overshoot and then bring it back. That should be pretty, pretty close. So there, now I'm starting to capture the uh, center rail with the hydraulic ram, just to kind of give me an idea of where I, I am and where I need to be. And then uh, we'll just start tracking up. Now uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, set, now that I explained that, I'm gonna set the camera down. Uh, down below so you guys can see me load. Decided to go forward just a little bit. So um, that way we're as far forward as possible. So pretty close. Looks good there. 
we're a little bit more on that side but not by much we're still legal within the limits of the of the confines of the trailer so uh let's go ahead and chain her down really quick All right, we're looking good. Let's go ahead and level the deck out. Run the axles back. Probably gonna have to tilt up first though. Let's do them both at the same time. Alrighty, now we're just gonna go down the road and deliver this 938 loader. good grade started at the bottom for my dead stop and maintained 40 all the way up with this 605 horsepower uh, steepest part of the grade right here we're dropping down to 30 but yeah it's pulling pretty good for pulling the three axle sled of a trailer and then the uh, 938 so doing pretty good pretty pretty happy with it oh it was a good thing i called the customer yesterday and told him we'd have it up here just kind of verified all the details and he suggested for me to park exactly where I'm at and do not try to go down that road. And yeah, I can see why. I would definitely not want to take this truck especially, but any truck down that road for that matter. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and set up shop here and uh, start offloading and we'll just track the machine in. So PTO, um, and then this truck has beacons on the front. So we'll throw those on, we'll throw our flashers on roll the window up. Let's mark ourselves. Mark ourselves destination arrival. Cool. All right, let's go ahead and bump the idle. Ready? First step, let's go ahead and remove this chain. I'm just going to put this uh, belt clip on though for the remote. Okay. That's on. Let's go ahead and remove this first chain. Uh, first, I'm gonna put a little bit of tilt in it though. Put a little bit of back tilt, up tilt. And let's go ahead and. I'm gonna go ahead and plop all the chains in the middle because we gotta put it back up in that milk anyway. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead, now we're gonna go ahead and remove all the rear chains because we're tilted back, so there's no, not, no reason really for these chains. All right, now that we've done that, we'll go ahead and level, level the deck out. So, tilt up first. Tilt, 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 about there. And then we'll start running the axles forward. And as we're running the axles forward, we're just watching that front fifth wheel plate, making sure that it's not gonna pop up. We're probably gonna have to go up a little bit higher. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Okay, there we go. The deck is about to make contact with the ground. That's exactly what we want. All right, deck's on the ground. So now we're clear to kind of just start feathering the deck down. We don't want to go too fast though, because the axles still have a lot of uh, travel left. We'll go, keep going. Basically, you don't want to let that middle axle come off the ground. Okay, axles are forward. We'll go ahead and continue to lower down about there and remove our last chain. those gloves there and we'll go ahead and hop up in the machine so what I like to do especially with articulated machines because let's say 
that you need to steer this way. You need to get the back end this way, okay? So you turn to the right. That might get the back end going that way, but it, what it's also gonna do is it's gonna take the front end away from you. So, or uh, the opposite direction. So you kinda have to be careful with these articulate machines. Um, so what I think I'm gonna do is I am gonna take the back end that way a little bit, which like I said, is going to cause this front tire to come off the bed. Now, obviously the tire is like a foot and a half, two feet wide. So we have room to play with, but the point is, is that we're gonna get the back end going that way. And then once we're happy with where it's going, we're gonna have to bring the front tire back around, if that makes sense. So let's go ahead and hop up. Okay, open the door. So we'll go ahead and steer the back end over. Start coming back. Now I can see right here. That is the only tire I can really see. So we're just gonna continue doing what we're doing. Okay, we should be good there. So I'm gonna bring the tire back. shift into a little bit higher gear because that's kind of ridiculously slow. I think it's because I disengaged the parking brake after it was in gear. Since the truck is going to remain out here on the road, I'm going to run the axles back and get this deck leveled out. That way you can see the flashers on the tail of the trailer. There's a car behind us, so let's see if we can get this done. Yeah, the hydraulics are super fast on this, I love it. It's like what, 30 seconds? bucket up so I can see kind of what we're doing here. So a trick with articulate machines is always hug your corner with the front tire because the back tire is just gonna follow that same path. It's not like a like a car where you know if you're right on it with the front tire your back tire is gonna go over it kind of thing you know. Well, for visibility, I'm gonna go like bucket like in the air. Just kinda gotta be careful. We got, eh, actually, I'm not really comfortable with that. I'm gonna go down lower. Morning. Hey, <laughs> yeah. luckily I did. Yeah, I'm tracking the machine into the middle of the desert right now. Yeah, yeah, he, he gave me another pin drop of where it was. He just told me to park where I'm parked right now and track the machine in like 150 yards into the desert and I'll see a drop site. So that's what I'm doing right there. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> it's an All right, sounds good. Yep, thanks. That was the our dispatcher for uh, Caterpillar. Just calling to check in. That was a little further than I wanted it to be. I'm gonna have to walk all the way back. Oh well. So we're looking for a mini excavator. I guess there's a mini excavator already out here. So I was gonna have the bucket in the air, but then I started thinking of horror stories of uh, rolling loaders over, even when they're not loaded with a load. 
because we've done plenty of those, so I, was, I decided to keep it low. <laughs> I just, my thought was that I didn't want to hit a bush or something, but I'd rather hit a bush than uh, roll this thing over. But I'm pretty sure if you hit one of those, it's a quite a hefty find. Luckily we didn't hit any. Okay, break. Go ahead and lock it up. I already spoke with the customer. He has his own personal cat key. So I'm just gonna lock up the machine and he can open it with his, his key. This one does not have a door on this side. Okay. Cool. I'm just gonna send a picture to the customer. Cool. All right, well, now we're just walking back. Oh, look at the squirrel. Anyway, uh, yeah, we're just walking back, hoping we don't get bit by a rattlesnake. Pretty excited about that truck ran really good to its job all right well i gotta answer this but uh we'll go ahead and head back to the yard and probably call out a video thanks for watching all right we're home shut her down put those chains back where i found them and uh we'll call it a day all righty everyone well with that being said i'm gonna go ahead and call this video a wrap hopefully you guys enjoyed the video as always like comment subscribe thank you for watching let me know in the comments what you thought about the video and we will see you on the next one thanks for watching guys